Hello and welcome to My Secret Math Tutor. For this video, I'm going to show you how you can use the Casio FX9750 G2 calculator and really just get into some of the basics of that calculator. Specifically, what I'll cover is how you can turn it on off, uh, how some of the main button buttons work, and how you can use that run matrix mode to do some really basic operations like add, subtract, multiply, divide, and really get into uh, you know doing some quick calculations. So let's go ahead and grab that calculator and get down to business. All right. So a graphing calculator like this is usually pretty intimidating. And the first thing you want to know is, hey, how do I turn this thing on and off? You'll find the on button for this particular calculator over here on the right side. It says AC slash on. And when you press that, the calculator will turn on. Now, if you want to turn this thing off, um, you actually use the same button, but you have to press the shift button and then press that on button in order to turn it off. So I'm going to press shift on. And now the thing powers down and it's off. Let's go ahead and turn it on again. Now the good news is uh, many calculators like this will have an automatic shutoff feature if you haven't used it for a while. Uh, so you don't have to worry about it you know, draining your batteries. Uh, but it is a good idea to shut it off from time to time if you know you're not going to be using it. So again, to shut it off, go second on, and now it's powered down. All right, let's get into how some of these buttons work. A lot of graphing calculators, they're so intimidating because every single button does multiple things. Uh, you want to start off with what is directly printed on the button for its primary feature. For example, if I want to multiply something, I can see that this button here has the multiplication symbol, and it's printed right on the button, so that's what it's going to do. Let's go ahead and list that out as primary. Now, for some of the other things the button can do, those are usually printed right above the button in some different colors. The way you can usually tell these apart is uh, they're color coded to whatever button you have to press first. So on my particular calculator, you'll see that my shift button is kind of a, a yellowish color. And in the left, in yellow, is uh, what the secondary feature of that button is. So for example, let's say I want to take the square root of a number. The square root is just right above this number in yellow. So I'll have to press the shift squared button and it will take care of that square root. So I'm going to label everything in that uh, upper left corner as the secondary feature or the shift feature, uh, whatever you want to call it. All right, let's move on to the other corner here. This on my calculator is in orange, and it contains a lot of the letters like A, B, C, D, E, F. Uh, this is what I'll call the alpha features. Uh, these ones, if you want to type in uh, a message or write a small program, you may need to use the alpha keys in order to do so. Uh, just like the shift button, you'll have to press the orange alpha key first and then press the button associated with that letter. So again, if I really want to do the letter R, capital R, I'll press alpha and then I'll find capital R above the number six and I'll put an R on the screen. All right, so now that we know a little bit more on how the buttons work, we need to take this thing for a test drive um, and I need to get to the section of the calculator where I can do a lot of those calculations. This is the run slash matrix mode of the calculator. And it's actually highlighted as one of the first options in the main menu. So anytime you turn this on, you know, of course, it brings you to the main menu. And it brings you to uh, a list of all kinds of things the calculator can do. It can do statistics, graphing. But what we really want is just some basic calculations. So I'm going to highlight that one, then press my execute button, and I'll get into that particular mode. All right. Now, in case you end up anywhere else on the calculator, um, and you're lost and you're like, oh man, how did he get in there? You can always get back to the main menu by just pressing your menu button. It's right next to the arrows. So if I press menu, and then you can find the run slash matrix uh, mode over here. So let me arrow over to that and press enter. And now I'm back into the section of the calculator where I can start doing some calculations. Uh, that's also good to know if you are borrowing a calculator from someone because who knows how they left it. All right. Let's go ahead and, and take this thing for a test drive with some simple calculations. Um, I'm going to go ahead and turn this thing off as if I was starting from fresh. That way we can see how this is all going to work out. All right, so I want to do some of these simple problems, just adding, subtracting, and we'll start off by turning on the calculator on. Now, since I left it in the uh, run mode, it's going to start off there. If I was in some other uh, place, I'd press menu. Then I could select that run slash matrix mode, and I'd end up back here anyway. All right, we need to do 23 minus 17. I can see uh, these numbers are printed on the buttons themselves, so I'm using the primary feature to so just type in 23 minus 
17. And actually have it do those computations, I'll press the uh, execute button down here, and I get an answer of 6. So it's taken care of those calculations and told me, hey, the answer is 6. Now, for something a little bit more complicated, you know, this one has parentheses, that's completely okay, because I have some buttons on the calculator that actually have those parentheses on them. So I can open up a set of parentheses, do 201 plus 4, close the parentheses, and then do divide by 5. So again, I'm sticking with just the primary features of the button. I'm not pressing any shifts or alpha, just directly what's on them. All right, let's go ahead and have it do that. So I'll press execute, and I'll get an answer of 41. All right, for some problems, you may notice that they don't actually have a multiplication symbol in there. This is 3 multiplied by the quantity of uh, 7 minus 11. Uh, I think it's a good habit to go ahead and type in the multiplication anyway. Let's go 3 multiplied by, open parentheses, 7 minus 11, close parentheses, execute. So here we're getting an answer like negative 12. Now if you do have to use one of those features or functions that needs a secondary or shift button, no worries, you just have to figure out where it's located. For this problem, I want to do the square root of 4 plus 3 squared. So I need to figure out, hey, how do I do the square root of 4? The good news is the square root is just right above this button in yellow. Um, and since it is in yellow, I know I'm going to have to press my shift key first. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to press shift, press that square root button now. So now it's on my screen. I can see that it wants to do the square root. And now I'll type in the 4. Not bad. Now I can continue this off with plus 3. And my squaring button, if I want to square a number, is actually the same one, but this time I don't press that shift button. So I'll just press the squaring button, and a little 2 will show up. So you can see how these shift and alpha buttons really uh, give you a lot of functions for just a single button. All right, so it looks like we have it typed in all correct. Let's go ahead and press execute. And the answer is 11. Now in some other videos, I'll get into the more advanced features of this. Of course, get into graphing, which is the best feature of one of these graphing calculators, uh, and really show you how you can get the most out of one of these calculators. If you'd like to see some more videos, please visit mysecretmathtutor.com.